configurations of the, the different stuff on the internal side. But we're talking about the external, publicly facing devices. So what are the criminals going to want to do? Well, let me tell you this. We've got five bullet points up here. The utility industry has been doing this for a hundred years. They've got a list that's about four times this long of the things that they're concerned with. Okay? All right. So, free energy. Every time I talk to somebody, I'm like, yeah, man, I, I do research on smart meters. They're like, oh, man, you get me free energy? Dude? What's up? I tell them, no, I, I don't do that type of research. I mean, I know a lot about a smart meter, but I, because each meter is different, doing this is different for every meter. But it has been done. Criminals are doing it. Uh, back in, I believe it was February, it might have been a little later, um, you, you can check Brian Krebs' uh, uh, blog, and, and you'll see that he talked about this happening in Puerto Rico. What happened is, is that there was an FBI report, um, investigation into uh, a utility stealing energy uh, down in Puerto Rico. And uh, they estimated that if it had continued, it had been about $400 million worth of that, of energy. They actually got 10% penetration. What I mean is, they had an insider steal the software that was supposed to be programmed in meters. Uh, they knew the password, because it never got changed. And they were able to modify 10% of the meters in Puerto Rico so that businesses and uh, 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 residents got cheaper electricity. So it has occurred. This is a problem, but it was completely ignored because it was suppressed by the FBI. Okay? So that's what we're trying to, that's one of the things we're trying to help people understand. Uh, corporate espionage, uh, it is a concern. If you can understand the consumption of a business at a certain point, a critical point, you know, are they going to make their deadlines? If you need to understand that, are they working on something new and something good? Okay, they probably don't want you to be able to read that data off of it. But if you can't tell from the tools that are provided to you by the manufacturer whether or not that information is accessible without a password, it needs something to help you understand that. Therefore, another reason for our tools. Uh, access to backing resources. If that's a given, okay, can somebody take a meter, take an aggregation point, and can they get to the servers on the back end by the end, you know, insert shell code? Okay. But also, you know, they're just like any other business. They try to consolidate resources. So there's data devices and stuff in their substations. Those potentially could be going, uh, uh, communicating through the aggregate. All right, so can I hop from a meter, can I do something a meter, and hop over to their SCADA network? So they're concerned about that. A kinetic attack, I have to explain this one a lot. And they, they, a lot of people don't have their heads around, wrapped around this very well. I say, yes, I can disconnect your meter. And the first thing they say is like, well, I can hit it with a baseball bat. They actually call it the baseball bat attack. Um, or they say, well, I can drive a, a truck into the truck into the substation. Okay, yeah, you can do that. But when you walk up to the meter, if I change it via the optical port, the configuration, if I turn it off via the optical port, which one can you tell happened? The one, with, the one that has been beaten up with a baseball bat, or the one that has been changed via the optical port? You're going to know instantly. And, and here's why it's a big deal. They hate these pictures. These two pictures up right up here. They hate them because I'm pointing out that there's a residential meter. Re commercial meters don't have a disconnect, okay? But resident residential meters do. So I can disconnect, and that means you turn off the power. Now I can go in. If I am able to do this, I have the security code. You do need that, and I know which function to run. I can turn Sprint off on this cell phone tower. I can't turn the other two off because they're on commercial meters. So they need to understand where they're deploying these types of devices. And then they turn to me and they say, oh, well, you know, we just turn off that functionality. Well, you just use a function to turn that functionality off. So I turn the functionality on, and I turn the meter off. Thank you. Okay. So, um, and then obviously we all know, you know, we know about hacktivism. We talk to people a little bit. People are getting more educated about that. But at the same time, they're going to use any resource they have, uh, they have to uh, meet their agenda. We are talking about smart meters, but uh, this is what kind of a good example of a, a, uh, an aggregator on a pole top. The concern about these things is that you know they're high up on the pole. They're connected to the power lines. Okay, and it, does anybody here want to 
trying to steal a transformer. So you'll probably fucking die. I saw the movie go up. I saw you. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, what do you need? You know, you might be able to pull copper out of there or something like that. So somebody may do it if it's not energized, okay? But when they figure out that there's network capabilities on the pull top, you don't think that they're not going to go for it? I can sweep those lines really easy. I actually, the neighborhood that this is in, it's on a side street. No houses face it. And there's a, a ditch on the other side of it. It's not too hard to steal these things. And if I can figure out a way to modify these things and put some type of device in there, the next one I'm not going to steal. I'm just going to hop up on it, pull it apart. If they have no tamper detection and alerting, then I'm going to put my device in there. And I'm connected until they finally figure out that I'm in there. And I'm using this as, as my entry point. I put the OMG on there because at first uh, I was like, oh my fucking god. Um, you know, because it's a network port. You, know, you just tap me, throw my laptop right on there. I did talk to somebody who did an assessment on this one. He said they have actually have that locked down really well, um, but there was other concerns. That they had bigger concerns, bigger priorities that they needed to address on that, and they did, they did work on it. But only one of them weeks at only one at least one weeks at me. You know, every time I pick it up, so hey, I need, I need you to talk to me. So how am I going to get a meter? Well, I just I call I call the meter vendors and ask them to give me one. That's how I do my research. Uh, sometimes they're nice, sometimes they're not. Uh, but how are criminals going to get it? Well, they're going to pay some crackhead five dollars to go out there and pull this meter off, okay, and toss it in the back of the truck, and they're going to drive off. But they can do it themselves if they want to. If they don't, uh, then they have somebody else do it. The, um, you know, I mean, this is freaking dangerous right here. But it's just, I mean, even if it's locked, if they don't have a tamper alarm, or who cares if they have a tamper alarm because they're not going to come pulling up to me within two minutes. They're, they're not locked. The meters are there's too many out there. And then you take them home. You you know you don't have to plug them into your house to uh, to work on them. That's an actual example of, of an adapter that I was talking about. You don't want to take a smart meter and just plug it into this because it's still uh, still not protecting you. So please still be careful. And uh, these pads right here with the danger on them, that's, those are the ones I was reaching for that Travis yelled at me about. Um, when I'm thinking about the, you know, how am I going to approach an assessment uh, on the smart meters, how am I going to figure out what other people are going to do? I break it down, data at rest and data in motion. You have your microcontrollers, you have your memory devices, you have your radios, and that's data at rest. Okay, if they haven't protected those components, then I can just pull all that stuff down. Okay, the firmware, I can grab the firmware from the, the microcontrollers, obviously data and potentially firmware from the memory components. And the radios might have firmware in them, or they might be driven by the microcontroller. And then obviously data in motion, they have to communicate between the two. All right, and so if I can tap that with the, and, and I'll explain that in a second. If, if, I, if I can tap that, then I can see the information that they're passing, which is actually more important because it's necessary. So data at rest, we just need to figure out what components are on there. It just takes a little bit of research. Uh, I mean, this, the data sheets are all published for these things. The easiest ones to tap have their pins exposed. You know, whether they're fully exposed or partially exposed, um, we can. Uh, we, there are devices out there that can second that ha can actually communicate with those. You don't need to even power the full meter to pull the memory off of it. The ones on the, the images on the right are all grid array components. They're a little bit more complex. It makes it harder to potentially tap these because these are really nicely de designed embedded devices. They're multi-layered, so you might not all see all the lines that are coming out of these. Okay. And, uh, um, but we can still pull those off. We can still heat up those boards and, and pull those uh, memory components off. And uh, I did that for a, a uh, actually Q did it. Um, and we did it for a client. And we, uh, we were talking to the client. And uh, we said, yeah, we pulled the memory off. We got this other information. We didn't get very far. Um, and they're like, what do you mean you got information? Because the vendor told them it's all encrypted. Because they thought it was protected. So at least we showed them that. And they can start asking more questions. Once, once you have those devices, I'm sorry, uh, yes sir. Do they have data? Depending on the, and for the, micro, uh, the question was,